say those things because I don't think I would be able to do any of the things if I had not met him in my life and it's very exciting and I'm continuing to look forward to what he has planned for me and the things that are going to continue to happen in my life and where he's going to take me <coughs> and, and, and what's going to happen and the things he's going to do through me and, and the people that are kind of coming to my life that are going to bless me or that or maybe it's going to be a two-way street. Yeah. And all those things, it's very exciting. And, you know, I continue to look forward to all the things that are happening in this church, the messages, the testimonies that are being shared, the word that is being given, the songs that are being born, you know, everything that's happening. And I would not change that for anything Amen. in the world. So Amen. I just wanted to share that. Um, you know, I encourage you to continue to pursue the Lord because he's he has this great plan for us and that we have not even an, an idea of, of, of how great and good for us that's right. and that's right. Right. Any testimonies or prayer requests? Yeah, I've got yeah. a prayer request. I um let me say this. Thank you. 
everything that you do for us. For giving us your own word, Father. For giving us your promises. We thank you, Father, because we know that you have promised us healing. And all of those that are not here right now, because they are afflicted by anything, whether it's a physical manifestation or or something they feel in their spirit, Lord, we know that it is bound on this earth right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, we declare the healing for all of those that are not here that are suffering. We ask, Father, that you keep everybody safe. <clears throat> Wherever we're going now with this weather that we're having, that it's not provided for the, the best conditions for us to be on the road. We know that you keep us safe and that you take us and guide us to where we're supposed to go every day. We thank you, Father, for releasing your word in this place, for giving us your word that we can go out and share to others so they can know who you are, Lord. We thank you for choosing us, Lord, to participate in this task, so we can go out and share with people who you are, talk about your goodness, your word, Lord, how good you are, Father, how much you love us. We give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord Jesus. Friday, we pray be a house of prayer. Um, we have something like this. So we go back to God's heart. Um, I know we don't get really into the lines of what we want to do. Um, this verse is, is all, all over the place. And we just got to spend a little bit of your energy back to just pray and get it right. Whatever it takes. Is that going to be a worship service? Or? No, it's actually uh, more or less of a uh, uh, we're just talking about <coughs> just to hear him hear him, hear him firsthand with the spirit of the Father fully walk in Christ others are inspired to the spirit of unity through the spirit of the Holy and Mary so if we meet with the spirit of unity God is going to awaken us in a new way so we're praying for God's good light Sunday and then Saturday too. <coughs> That's what we can plan to see the last Wednesday. If these two people come back up, we're going to plan to see the last Wednesday. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, 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 it's just for the, 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 the I'm sure the higher issues from one to start off Carolina to the chapel and I'm also getting a lot of that from my heart filling the chapel and I'm also seeing it coming your way now. You know, the more my sense of feel is coming back in. So, I want to see I guess it's my
speak the word tonight. We do not we have violence again. May the people may rejoice in you. Praise God. <clears throat> I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak in new tongues. I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every seed, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, to the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, and I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord will refuse to devour for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. James, do you take the offering, please? about you, Lord. Yes.
altogether wonderful, altogether wonderful, altogether wonderful. Desire. Father, we bless you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for the people that have gathered here tonight, Lord. Bless them, encourage them, and strengthen them, Lord. Be a very present help in the time of trouble. Show yourself mighty on our behalf, Lord. 
and we'll be sure to give you all the praise and the glory for now and throughout eternity. For you are the only true and living God, and we bless your name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Praise the Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Go out and get the microphone. I forgot I took it home Sunday. <laughs> I, it's the same ones that were in it Sunday, but I think they'll probably make it three. I don't know. I can't tell if you got anything out of it. No. I can use this one. I think. Is it on? It's on. You can hear me all right through that. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. We can get. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Good showing that I got some power here, so I guess it's on. But Praise God. All right. Well, I'm going to be brief tonight as well. Appreciate all of you coming out. In spite of the, in spite of the weather and all the rest of it, but it's all good in Jesus. Amen. I was thinking, you know, we, we have a, uh, Roberto was talking about how God has dealt with him and how he feels, you know, more comfortable getting up in front of people. There's a scripture in Matthew that talks about the very thing that says, uh, don't, be, don't be afraid of what you'll say before people. If God puts you before him, he'll give you what you need to say. Amen. And that's true for all of us, not only from the pulpit or, you know, in a public speaking arena, but also in the way that we reach out to other people, the way that uh, in that same uh, chapter, I believe it's chapter 11, it, the scripture talks about uh, the harvest, how white the harvest is and ready. You know, it's, it, it's ready for harvest, and that's certainly the, the case. And he said, pray that there would be laborers to go and to, uh, to participate in that harvest, and that's where we come in, amen? And I just, I, I think, you know, we're faced with a lot of situations and circumstances here all the time, but recently especially, and I think it, it, there's no uh, coincidence that the, the more uh, God begins to deal with us, the more we begin to respond to that, the greater the opposition. And uh, not that we should be afraid of it, we should just be wise enough to realize that a lot of the things that we face in this life, even with sickness, because this isn't coming from God, but uh, all of those things are attacks of the enemy. And we know sickness doesn't come from God or he wouldn't be healing us. He'd be fighting himself. So the enemy sends these things and, the, and a lot of it is to keep us distracted and focused on ourselves, on our situations and our circumstances rather than seeing that the fields are white and ready to harvest, that right. there are people out here depending on us and don't even know that they're depending on us, right? So... That's what I want to talk to you about just briefly tonight. And uh, so let's go to Matthew chapter 10, Roberto, if you will. We'll go to Matthew chapter 10 and begin at verse 1. We'll just read verse 1 and then we'll jump to verse 7 and 8. But starting at verse 1, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. I want you to notice how this plays out because, you know, you think you hear Jesus is calling his disciples and sending them out to do things. And it's kind of interesting to me to see then what happens immediately following that. And I think that's where we're at. That's where I see uh, that we are in this latter day. Praise the Lord. So, And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, Raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, and freely give. So, praise the Lord. So Jesus tells his disciples that they are going to be surrounded by need. Amen? And here's his instructions. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Amen? Uh -huh. Now imagine the people that these disciples are going to be around. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen? The diseased, uh -huh. the dying the despised, yep. the dangerous. Yep. Amen? And that's not exactly appealing. Uh -uh. And that's where a lot of the times the church withdraws or draws back because they think this can't be God. 
But look, this is exactly what he, he sends them out with power. He empowers them and then sends them out and tells them, this is the junk you're going to have to deal with. Right. Praise the Lord. That's the reason for the empowering. Hallelujah. Amen. So I can imagine the look on the disciples' face when the next words that come out of Jesus' mouth are even more dramatic and even more confounding, I'm sure, to them. Look at Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. Now let's place ourselves there because that's why this is in the book, right? I mean, we don't need a history of what happened. He's telling us what we're dealing with. This is about us. So he said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You know, I, I've read some things about sheep. In fact, we were going to have some, we were going to get some goats at one time until I realized I'd have to take care of them. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, Amen. I've got a dog and stuff already we had to take care of. But I didn't. I, I got to thinking, you know, in the spring and the summer it would be kind of fun to have some goats running around that place and just kind of neat to have them and the grandkids could play with them and Sally could milk them or something and whatever. <laughs> but I, then I realized that, you know, winter will come and I'll still have to be traipsing out there hauling hay or something, you know, and, and taking care of them and watching over them and all this kind of stuff. So... I, I kind of looked into some of this, and, and, and sheep are probably, if not the most, among the most helpless domesticated animals that there are. Mm -hmm. They're just, they can't do anything for themselves. Mm -hmm. Amen? They are, they're also some of the most senseless. Yeah. They're stupid. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just not very bright. Amen? Just a little noise, just a harmless noise can send them into a frenzy. They'll freak out. They'll run into walls. They'll run into each other. They'll get hung up in fences. They'll, they'll do all kinds of weird stuff. Amen? And when they do face danger, they haven't got any kind of defense mechanism. They don't have teeth. They don't have claws. They don't, they're not powerful enough to defend themselves against anything. All they can do is run. And unfortunately, they're slow. Yep. Praise the Lord. It's like the guy who said, hey, I, I played some football. He said, the problem was I... I wasn't very big, but I was slow. <laughs> you know? Amen. And uh, that's sheep. They're just, they're just defenseless animals. I mean, they're, they're just not able to really do much for themselves. And so the result is the dumbest thing that a sheep can do is wander into a pack of wolves. Right? right? And then, but here is exactly what Jesus says he's sending them to. Mm -hmm. You're going to be sheep, and I'm sending you in the midst of wolves. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. John chapter 10 and verse 11. So I'm saying we, we, you know, we get this kind of counterintuitive idea that, that, that this can't be right. That isn't what Jesus is doing. That's exactly what happens with us. He calls us, he empowers us, and then he sends us out like sheep, helpless, harmless, without any real power, right into the, the wolf's den. Amen. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. Again, let's keep ourselves in the context of this because that's where we belong. Amen. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So why in the world is the great shepherd telling his sheep to hang out with wolves? <laughs> Jesus is telling us, I'm sending you to dangerous places where you're going to find great evil. Hallelujah. And I'll be your strength. And I'll be your protection. Amen. One of the reasons I don't think, uh, or one of the reasons I think we don't experience this empower, empowerment of God many times is because we don't go. Right. Hmm. Amen. He didn't empower us just to sit around and flex our muscles with each other. Right. He empowered us because there is evil, and the only way to overcome it is by his strength. By his power, by his might, amen? It forces us into a place where we depend on God. 
and not our abilities. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. So if you're up against something tonight, or you feel like, you know, God's got something for me, amen, but it seems like every time I try to step out and do it, something comes up to stop it. Nobody shows up for the church service, praise the Lord. You know what? I mean, so what do we do? Just fold the tents and go home? No, we've been empowered. And all we got to go. we got to do what God has empowered us to do. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Right. Amen. So now I, I know all men obviously doesn't mean everybody. Every person on earth is going to hate him. All right. But the picture is clear. Being a representation of Jesus or being sent by Jesus, amen, the world is going to hate you. Why? Because the world hated Jesus. And the world is under the dominion of Satan. He's the prince of the power of the air. The, the God of this world is what Jesus called him. Amen? So that it's no wonder that they would hate us, that there would be uh, opposition to anything we try to do. Right? Because we've been sent into this den of wolves. Amen? And we're powerless without the power of God, without depending on God and without stepping out in faith and doing what God has sent us to do. So the picture is clear. The, the world is going to hate you. Not every single person in the world, but the world as a body, as a group of unbelieving people, they don't like us. They're not accepting of us, praise the Lord. But our security and our provision, our power is in him. Amen. Praise the Lord. I give you power, he said, to tread upon serpents, to, you know, to do all this that I've called you to do, right? right? All right. Let's look at this. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? Right. We don't have anything to be afraid of. We don't need to back off from anything, right? Being in Christ involves a greater security than this world can ever provide. You see, the power and the provision and the security that we have is in going and in doing because that's when we have to depend on him. I mean, you know, you can go through a day without really depending on Jesus. You can just do your thing. You know what I mean? Just... Get up, go to your job, do your thing, do what you got to do throughout the day, and not really depend on Jesus. We can have church services without depending on Jesus. Amen? But if we're doing what he tells us to do in the power of his might, even when there's resistance, even when nobody shows up. I said years ago, I, I, I'm going to, I told Sally, I get aggravated, don't get me wrong. There, there's times I get aggravated. I said, it'll be me and the, and the music director, you know, <laughs> me and the, and, and the worship leader. And it does frustrate me, and it does aggravate me, like I know it does Mike, like it does anybody when you prepare, right? But that's what the enemy wants you to do is then just fold up. Right. Don't do it. The fact that we're here tonight, us, is evidence that God has empowered us to do something, and we're not going to back off. Praise the Lord. We're going to do what God has called us to do, and we're going to do it by the power of His might, not by what we see in front of us, not by what uh, you know the world is showing us, not by the vast numbers of people that are here, but simply because God sent us to do it. Amen? Amen. Because God has called us, praise the Lord, to do that very thing. And because He has, He's going to provide not only the means by which we do it, but the strength to carry on and do it anyhow. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Look at verse 30, still uh, Matthew 10, verse 30. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. See, Jesus knows every detail of our lives, and he loves us totally. Yes. Amen? We've got nothing to fear, even when we screw up, because he knows it's just the, hair of, the hairs on our head. It's not like he's, he can say, well... You know, Ron, you've got uh, 
18,530,000 hair follicles there. And uh, James, you've got you know, 25 million hair follicles. And somebody else, no, he's saying, I know the, 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 most, the, the, the finest details, the most intimate details of you, of who you are, of what you, your fears. Your doubts, your questions, I, I know it all. And I love you anyway, and I'm going to protect you. I'm not going to let, not one hair of that head is going to fall to the ground unless I allow it. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God has got a plan, and he has a protection. And it's all about us being willing to step out, even when you're afraid, even when you have questions, even when you doubt, because that's when his strength is the greatest. In our weakness, his strength is made perfect. Amen? There's, you know, there's going to come more and more obstacles and resistance as we get closer to the point that God has directed us to. Amen? And the enemy, is, he, he does what he does. He wants to get us discouraged so we don't ever get there. So we give up before we get there. So we say it's just too much hassle, too many giants, right? Too much junk between us and the plan that God has for us. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 uh, verses 1 through 3. We're going to sheep up. You know the expression, man up? <laughs> it's the Lord. Bah. We're going to sheep up in the power of his might. Praise yeah. God. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. This is Paul. But by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Amen? So lots, you know, lots of Christians gravitate toward the what of the gospel. Amen? Without considering the why that produced the what. Am I making any sense to you? Praise the Lord. Knowing what something is, is one thing. Knowing the why that gave rise to the what literally changes everything. Uh -huh. Woo! Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Praise the Lord. And we know the, we know the what. We think the what is the all. But the why of the what is what's really important. Praise God. Amen. It changes everything. Why did Jesus come and why for us? Why is there a rescue for rebels? Why would the good shepherd give himself for sheep? Why do we even have opportunity to talk about this outrageous, amazing act of grace that turned the world upside down? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. John 17, verse 24. That's the gospel that Paul preached, by the way. Right. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest them, me before the foundation of the world. Amen. Praise God. John, uh, 1 John chapter 4, uh, verses 7 through 10. 1 John 4, 7 through 10. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Mm -hmm. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Amen. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And I'll remind you that he was the lamb of God right. that takes away the sin of the world. The sending has not changed. Right. He still sends sheep yes. into the, 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 the den of wolves. Yes. But we know that while Jesus depended totally on God, on his father, yep. he said, the works that I do, they're not me, but it's the father that's in me. He does the work. I can't do anything without him. He tells us if you abide in him, you will bear much fruit. Yes. You see the, the analogy here of, of, of sheep into the world. But in this case, the sheep are the most powerful things 
change uh, uh, agents that there is in the world. Because they look to be so weak, so ineffective, so so uh, so in, unable to do anything on their own. And in yet, that's the very thing that gives them power. They depend totally on the shepherd. And the shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Amen? Amen. Thomas Aquinas, a, a Catholic priest, and uh, wrote a lot of uh, commentaries. He said that uh, God is actus purus. That's Latin. And it is for God is a pure act. In other words, everything God does is perfect. Now, he said he has perfected us in the beloved. We are the perfect act or agent of God in this world. He has made us that by placing his spirit in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. First John Chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, and we'll wrap with this. First John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, the lambs of God. Praise the Lord. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We have been empowered by God and sent out into a world that doesn't want us and doesn't want what we have. But if we'll go, in spite of that, he will save them. He will deliver them by our hand. We get to share the glory of God. The Lamb of God is still taking away the sin of the world. Yes. Amen? Amen? We are that Lamb. We are the Lambs of God, and He is the great Shepherd mm -hmm. that watches over us and protects us and keeps us from all harm. Nothing, amen, can harm us. Right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Paul Lord. said it like this. The worst is the best. Yep. To live is God, to die is gain. Yep. Praise the Lord. You have power, and many times we haven't experienced that power to the degree that God wants us to right. simply because we haven't gone into the den with the wolves. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what's happening right now. That's what John, Mike has been talking about throughout the Midwest, how God is bringing people together, awakening us to, to who and what we really are. Right. So a lot of times we think, you know, you got to be this big, powerful. Look, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, yep. but he's also the Lamb of God. Yes. Praise God. It's yes. true of us. We have that same power uh, as the Lion of the tribe of Judah if we present it as lambs, mm -hmm. the Lamb of God. Amen. Can you say praise the, Lord? praise the Lord? Give him a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. Be brave. He's not going to let anything happen to you. Amen. You may feel weak, you may feel feeble, you may feel inadequate, but he has empowered his lands to operate as lions against the enemy. Glory to God. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being here tonight. And you are dismissed in Jesus' name.